something with you know keys yeah i know dude like this is again um you know laptops have made keyboards shitty partially to cut costs and partially to drop weight right but you should spend weight on experience quality and keyboards again keyboards are primary to your experience quality when using a laptop <laughs> like because you will get injured if they are bad like it's so important to have a good keyboard and laptop designers don't care because they're bad at their job like that's that's all that i can say Any books I read over the break? I mean, I tried reading a few books and I didn't like any of them enough to get very far. Do I think large language models like ChatGPT will automate a lot of low-level programming and debugging? No, no, they won't. They can't. Like, this is the thing. It's all, when people say that, either they are scamming you or they don't know what they're talking about, okay? Okay, here's the thing. There's so many things about this. Let me, let me try and encapsulate why this is all complete nonsense, because people don't seem to get it. <clears throat> like if you go ask ChatGPT, try this sometime, ask ChatGPT to tell you about some technical thing that exists, like tell me what are the research papers that summarize some topic or whatever. And what you'll get is things that sound like titles of research papers by authors who are maybe even real people, but they don't exist in their nonsense. And why is that? Because what ChatGPT is doing is not understanding your question and then searching its knowledge and returning information. It seems like that because that's what we want it to seem like. But all it's doing, it's just like a super Markov chain where it's putting together words probabilistically, right? That is literally all that's happening there. That is why it is called a language model, all right? So when you use something like that for code completion, all it is doing is stringing together symbols probabilistically <laughs> to fill out what you have done. So now, Sometimes that will result in things that are almost right. And, you know, you've probably seen on Twitter or something, somebody tweets, oh my God, it completed this thing and it does bubble sort or whatever, right? So first of all, that's cherry picked because you can do that 10 times and it won't work nine of the times, right? Um, but secondly, th the only reason that that worked is because that's a piece of code that like shows up a million times in the exam, well, not a million times, but like it's so much close to the statistical average of, of what is there um, that the thing can reproduce it, right? Now, here's the thing though, okay? If you are writing code that is very close, like, yeah, okay, so what's it doing? You start, you either give a description or you start typing some code. I've seen both versions and it's like, let's, let's fill out the body of code. If that can be done with a high degree of, uh, like I was going to say high degree of accuracy, that's not even the right thing to say, but you kind of know what I mean, right? Like if that gets you pretty close to what you were trying to do, then what you are trying to do is by definition not that interesting. And why are you typing it? Because like everybody knew what this thing is that you're typing. So what now once in a while we do that in programming. Like once in a while it's like, oh, here's some stupid function. I've written this a million times. I need to write it again. I would prefer to call something, but we don't have it here or something. Whatever reason, right? Um that happens sometimes, but that should be the vast minority of your programming time, okay? If it is not, you're writing bullshit code all the time, right? You, like, okay, so it's going to information theory, right? The amount of information in a message is, pro is another way, or it's proportional to the amount of surprise that a reader will have when reading the message, right? If you send somebody a message and, 
everybody could have predicted with 100% accuracy what was in that message before you sent it, then there's zero bits of information in that message and it can be compressed down to zero bits, right? And so another way of saying this is like if a large language model can print out the code that you were going to type, then there's very little information in that code, all right? Because it's predicting it from, from statistical, you know, generalness. Um, now, on the other hand, <laughs> the thing that actually ChatGPT does, okay, so there's two things that ChatGPT does, right? One is it refuses to answer your question because it's programmed by blue-haired people in San Francisco, right? But assuming you get past those filters, then it's just sort of riffing on the question, going off in different directions. So everything I just said a second ago was more like the code completion version which is uh, like there's one specific right answer and we're trying to converge on that. There's this other direction, which is just like, hey, we're starting with some text and riffing outward. And if you did it 10 times in fresh chats, you would get 10 different answers, um, which again, chat GPT does sometimes. It would do it a lot more if they didn't have filters on the front, right? Now, the thing about that is how does that get you to a goal that you're trying to accomplish in programming? <laughs> it like doesn't, right? You don't want to go outward. You want to like converge inward toward a correct answer. And so that mode of, um, of interaction is just the wrong one for programming. So all I would just say is Yeah, like if it helps, so, okay, if it helps you write source code, then the source code you're writing probably isn't that good, right? It probably doesn't need to be written because it already exists a lot or things very close to it already exist. But then here's, here's the other reasons why it doesn't matter. Um, like when you're programming, you don't spend that much time typing the source code. Even if you're a very slow typist, right? <laughs> like the time you spend is designing, um, debugging, uh, testing and using, right? And those are all intertwined. Now I do spend, when I'm on a roll, like you've seen this on a really good stream, um, you know, I spend a decent proportion of my time typing code when debugging goes well or we don't have that many bugs. But that's rare and it took me a long time to get to that point. And even then I suspect if I measure what percentage of my time do I spend actually typing, it's gotta be low, right? Um, because there's just not like, you know, if you type 50 words a minute, that's a moderate typing speed. How many minutes are in it is, you know, 60 minutes in an hour, right? So that's 3000 words in an hour. A word is like six characters, right? So 18,000 characters an hour, 18 kilobytes. We're going to round that up to 20 kilobytes. We'll say you type a little bit faster, right? Times eight hours in a work day, if you're not a millennial or a Zoomer. So, um, that's 160K of source code per day that you would type if you were just typing the whole time, <laughs> right? And um, I don't know how many lines that is, but let's say there's, I don't know, 50 bytes per line on average. Let's divide by 100 and multiply by two. So that would be 3,000 lines of code a day. That actually sounds a little bit low if you were just typing. Maybe I messed up the math somewhere, but like you would write, uh, you know, so if you, if you multiply that, let's just say that's 4,000 lines of code a day. That's a round number, uh, 200 work days a year if you're a slacker. Um, so that's almost a million lines of code a year. That's 800,000 lines of code a year that you would type if you were just typing the whole time, all right? Um, 
people don't produce anywhere near that much, right? Which is how you know they're not typing most of the time. So if you come along with this thing and you say, hey, here's this thing that saves typing. It's just not that helpful because most of the time you're not typing. Now, you could make a claim, which it would be foolish to make, but you could say, oh yeah, but, but a lot of the time is debugging and this system will produce code that has fewer bugs, but it won't because it doesn't understand anything, right? You need a general intelligence system to understand what is being done in order to produce code that actually works in non-trivial scenarios that won't have bugs. And so, all of this is just to say, I'm not saying someday AI systems won't be good at, you know, producing software. I'm simply saying chat GPT style things, language model style things are not going to be good at producing software. And anyone who tells you they are is not to be relied upon. Right? 